placement is really done arbitrarily. Um, it doesn't really have to be the right implant or the right position. Uh, it's just um, basically default of the software. So what we'll do, I'll change the properties of the implant. I'll mark it as number 10. I'll choose a diameter of an implant, let's say a Nobel Replace tapered, uh, 3.5 by 11.5. And I'll also create an abutment, but it's not an abutment in the conventional sense. It's just a direction indicator. I mark it in black. I make the diameter 3 millimeters and the length 15. So obviously it's not an actual abutment, but it'll give us a trajectory of the implant so we can see it going through the uh, virtual restoration. So you can see it, 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 it is quite palatal, and uh, now we can fine-tune it. So, so the first, first of all, we have to save it because if we go through all this uh, planning process and change and, and refinement and then the computer crashes, uh, we, lo we lose everything. So it's good to save every, every, um, every few minutes. Okay, so that takes a couple of seconds to save. Uh, once it's saved, I'm going to work in two, um, basically two planes. One is the buccal lingual here on the upper left and also mesiodistal. Okay, so you can see the uh, adjacent roots. Now, the, in this software, you can also mark the roots, and we will be able to, to plan the implant in a safe distance, which is about 1.5 to 2 millimeters from the adjacent roots. So let's start with the buccal lingual position. Again, it's going to be a rough positioning. I'm going to change the angle of the implant more towards the buccal and place the implant more in the confines of the bone. Now, the advantage of using the software, I can turn off the tooth if I wanted to. I can turn off the uh, gingiva, turn it on again, turn off teeth if I want to. But I can also measure the relationship between the platform of the implant and the soft tissue. So in this case, the way it's at, at right now, it's at a depth of 4.7 millimeters, which is relatively deep and, uh, and complicated and problematic in my opinion. So we'll aim for about three to three and a half millimeters. I can already move this implant a little bit more coronal. Let's turn the tooth back on and then look at the lower right hand side. Any changes that I make on the buccalingual view is going to be represented uh, on the lower right in the 3D view. So let's say I move it uh, excessively to the buckle. Okay, I don't know, this is uh, my computer is thinking. Let's say I move it excessively to the buckle you see the axis will be horrible. Obviously we don't want it, so we undo this one. Okay, uh, But uh, at the moment it's, um, it's reasonable. Let's look at mesiodistal. Mesiodistal, we may want to move it a little bit more to the distal. Okay, so move it just a tad. Okay, and now we can look at uh, the relationship between the implant and the adjacent roots. So we'll turn off the gingiva. Now we're looking just as at teeth. And roots, and I have a feeling this uh, implant is relatively close to the central incisor. So what I'd like to do is f first is, play, is change the position of the implant to be aligned with the adjacent roots. So you see the roots are aligned to the distal. So that's what I'll do next. I'll create a little tilt to the distal. Okay, that's an anatomical position, by the way. And let's see what it did to the trajectory. Still okay. I'm going to move it now bodily. Uh, bodily to the distal, just a little bit, just a tad. And then I check the uh, axial view starting from the platform. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we can tell from the platform position, position you can see the trilobe. Now we don't, we're not committed to a trilobe. We can choose a conical connection. This is just to plan the position. We can now measure the distance between the platform of the implant to the adjacent root. So we're looking at 1.5, which is really the minimum into the canine we're looking at um, over two. So we have some leeway. I would move the implant bodily slightly to the canine. Okay, so let's make a new measurement. Okay, let's measure again at the platform level. Okay, let's do it again. Measurement in millimeters from the platform to the canine. We're looking at one point eight and to the central we're looking at 
close to two. So that's much much more reasonable. Uh, you see, there's no there's no room to air. And now what we'll do, we'll basically travel along the implant surface, going apically. And of course, the distance to the adjacent roots is going to just increase because this is a tapered implant. But it doesn't hurt to make some measurements in the interim to measure that we have those uh, you know safety zones to the roots over two millimeters is. Uh, is very reasonable. It may be a little bit too close right in here, but we can make some final adjustments a little bit later. 1.7 millimeters. Still in a reasonable distance. So uh, let's save again, okay, just so we don't lose it. And what I wanted you to see is that I tried this before. Uh, no matter what position, the uh, it's not possible to place the implant in a screw axis uh, just because of the bone defect, number one. And uh, number two, if that's where the tooth is supposed to be, it'll be kind of going through the, um, through the incisor ledge. So that'll commit you to a cementable restoration. Now, anatomically, I can tell that the implant surface is also very close to the buccal plate. You know, I'm leaving less than half a millimeter in here. I can measure that, but that's, that's obvious. I may want to stay a little bit more to the palate. Now, I can't move the implant too much to the palate because we're, we're, we're missing bone. Okay, so we have a couple of options. We can we can uh, bury the implant a little bit deeper, uh, which you know has its own disadvantages, or we can tilt the implant slightly to the buckle. It's a cementable restoration anyhow. You'll have to use a custom abutment, and then move it bodily. So this is really uh, a fine a fine tuning stage. So I personally would feel comfortable with this position. Uh, it's an 11.5 millimeter implant, so it's long enough. The bone quality is good. And it's a little bit of a compromise because uh, I would love to, to have bone in great thickness all around the implant, but that's not the reality. Actually, during the procedure, I'll have to augment the concavity. Uh, we are planning a two-stage approach, meaning we'll place the implant and submerge it and uncover when the time comes. So you can cement the provisional about two days later, uh, like we discussed today. And then we'll uncover it. At the time of uncovering, I can mobilize some of, the, uh, some of the soft tissue from the palate to the buckle and get some additional good tissue. But uh, it looks like this is the most reasonable position. So here is the um, virtual wax up. Here is the implant position. I turn it on again. Uh, we are planning to augment the buckle bone to some extent do it as a two-stage approach and then uncover a few months later so look at these uh, images tell me what you think I'll take some uh, snapshots as well uh, let me know if this is acceptable if you agree if you have some feedback I'm happy to change things and this way we can order the guy tomorrow I'll get there next week and then we can do the procedure before she leaves town and I think that would be great for her and